What's good, people? Thanks as always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. Have you seen the film The Gambler? Um, good film, Mark Wahlberg. Um, fantastic film, actually. I've watched it recently again on the plane coming back to England from South Africa and love it. Absolutely love it. Um, that's what Deontay Wilder is doing right now. He's gambling. He is gambling. I'm not a gambler. So when I see Deontay Wilder do what he's doing, I'm like, what are you doing? You're just gambling here. And I mean, your numbers might not come up, right? It's all in favor of the house. Your numbers might not come up. Whereas a gambler might look at what Deontay Wilder is doing and think, he's got a chance here. He's got a chance here. I, I was thinking about um, what Deontay Wilder is doing and what he's done uh, in the last sort of, I don't know, 72 hours. And there is a chance he pulls it off. It's, I still think, a slim chance. But nonetheless, there is a chance that he exceeds the $100 million offer that was put on the table by DAZN. I know it sounds crazy, but there is a chance. Deontay Wilder and his team, so Shelley Finkel, Al Heyman, went to that meeting with DAZN with absolutely no intentions of signing with DAZN. All they wanted to hear was numbers and see what hand DAZN had. Again, bring that reference back to being a gambler. DAZN kind of showed everything. DAZN was like, we can pay you this. The one thing DAZN didn't give away, and I think we're realising this now, was how much Anthony Joshua was getting. So we knew that John Tawada was getting 40 million. We don't know what Anthony Joshua's figure is. And that's the number they wanted to hear. And the reason why Al Heyman, Finkel and Wilder in particular wanted to hear that Joshua number, because their intentions are clear. They still intend to fight AJ, but they still want this fight to be on Showtime pay-per-view. Fact. Right. So they want to hear that if Anthony Joshua is getting 60 and Deontay Wilder is getting 40, we can put it on pay-per-view and we can make more. We can make more for both fighters. That's all they want to know. They didn't get that number, but I think they're guessing that the number is around 60 to 70 million dollars. Can they put the fight on Showtime pay-per-view and charge, I dare say, what Manny Pacquiao may have charged, maybe a bit less, and make more than the 110 million dollars? Possibly. They possibly could. Let's be honest, they possibly could. That's all they're trying to do right now. And it could happen. It could happen. Anthony Joshua has not signed no exclusive deal with the zone. Anthony Joshua has signed a deal with Sky Sports and Matrim, but in terms of his American network, Anthony Joshua can go anywhere. He can go anywhere and fight. So if the zone are offering Anthony Joshua 60, 70 million, and Anthony Joshua gets a phone call from Al Heyman saying, We can give you 80. That's the gamble. And the second gamble they're doing is by putting Deontay Wilder on free showtime, so not on pay-per-view. Why are they doing that? Business sense. Makes fantastic business sense. Grows popularity. We need to grow his popularity. Deontay Wilder will say stuff like, oh, I'm trying to give back to the fans. Absolutely bollocks. That is rubbish. Deontay Wilder isn't trying to give back to the fans at all. Deontay Wilder and Steven Espinosa and the rest of them know in order to grow you a bit more than what we've grown you, let's put it on free. Let's put it on free right now so everyone can watch it. Everyone can watch it and build on what you've already been building on for the last sort of 12 months after Luis Ortiz and Tyson Fury. And then your next one will definitely be on pay-per-view. That's their plan. That's what they're trying to do. Again, it is a gamble. It might not pay off. It might pay off. But it could pay off. It could pay off. Again, Anthony Joshua doesn't have no exclusive deal with zone. Yes, he's fighting on zone now against Jarrell Miller, but there is no exclusive deal. It's a fight-by-fight -fight contract. Again, he should go to the highest bidder. If the zone is saying we can pay you this and Showtime is saying we can pay you that, he might fight on Showtime. He just might fight on Showtime. My only big question mark with all of this is why now? If I'm Deontay Wilder and I'm at home, I'm sitting, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, wait a minute. I've been with you and he has been with that super team. So Shelley Finkel, Al Heyman, debetta has been on board, Espinosa has been on board for a few years now. Right, And we know for a fact that he got paid $2.1 million for Ortiz. Why have they waited so long to push him? I mean, you could argue that he has to push himself. You could argue that he needed dance partners. But nonetheless, I mean, he's been with them easily since I think he's what 32nd or 33rd fight. So they've had enough fights to push him and they haven't up until now. So if I'm Deontay Wilder, I'm not super convinced that this team has my best interest just because they've not given me that push before. They're only doing it now because of a few other different players. Why didn't they make me the superstar before? That's my only concern if I'm Deontay Wilder. But again, he is gambling. 
He's gambling that he looks super impressive against Dominic Brazil, but the big one is that he's hoping that that super crew, and I call it the super crew now, Al Heyman, all those guys, Showtime, whatever, all the big wigs there, can put a package together that is bigger than the zone package that has been offered to Deontay Wilder to fight AJ, right? That's what he's hoping. And I'm thinking that package is around $100 million. I'm thinking it's 60 for AJ, 40 for Wilder. Can Showtime offer more money to put that fight on Showtime pay-per-view than the zone can for signups? Possibly. Possibly. It's a good gamble. It's a risky one, but it's a good gamble. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know. Peace.